Hello and welcome to this IOSH presentation on our No Time to Lose campaign. This occupational cancer presentation is designed to raise awareness of cancers caused by work and specifically from exposure to diesel engine exhaust fumes. <laughs> The International Agency for Research on Cancer, IARC, has said that people regularly exposed to diesel exhaust fumes at work can be up to 40% more likely to develop lung cancer. In Britain, more than 650 people a year die of lung or bladder cancer caused by diesel fumes exposed at work. Around the world, there are limited statistics about the number of workers exposed to diesel exhaust fumes and the number of cancer cases caused by exposure. In Europe, it's estimated that there are 5,700 new diesel cancer cases registered each year. So what are diesel engine exhaust emissions? Well, Diesel engine exhaust fumes are a mixture of gases, vapours, liquids, aerosols and particles created by burning diesel fuels. Diesel fumes may contain over 10 times the amount of soot particles than in petrol exhaust fumes. And the mixture includes several carcinogenic substances, meaning they have the potential to cause cancer. Breathing in high quantities of diesel exhaust fumes can cause irritation in the respiratory tract within just a few minutes of exposure, but prolonged exposure over many years may be much more harmful. The health effects will depend on the type and quality of diesel fuel being used. For example, whether it's low sulphur and the type and age of the engine, where and how it's used and maintained, and whether a combination of different diesel powered engines are contributing to overall exposure. Blue or black smoke can mean there's a problem with an engine, which in turn could mean that more toxic fumes are being produced. Diesel exhaust fumes were classified as probable carcinogens back in 1988. The International Agency for Research on Cancer, part of the World Health Organization, has recently upgraded them to a Group 1 carcinogen. So these emissions are now treated as a definite cause of cancer in humans. I'd like to take some time now to talk about how these fumes might cause cancer. Scientists agree that the risk of cancer is linked with the particulate emissions in the fumes. So the soot rather than the gases or vapours. These particulates are easily inhaled and drawn deep down into the lungs. Diesel engine exhaust exposure is now often measured by the elemental carbon concentrations in the air inhaled by workers. So even if you lead a healthy lifestyle, you don't smoke or have a strong history of cancer in the family, exposure to diesel exhaust fumes may still cause lung cancer depending on the amount of airborne particulate you're inhaling. Here's an exercise for you. To get an indication of what it's like breathing with damaged lungs from diseases such as those caused by cancer, you can do the straw walk. However, please make sure you're in good health and please do not take part if you're asthmatic. To do the straw walk, you'll need to walk at least 50 metres and go up and down a flight of stairs. When you return, you'll need to pinch your nose and breathe through the straw. This sensation is what it's like to breathe with severe lung damage, including that caused by occupational lung cancer. So who's affected? Well, anyone working with or around diesel powered equipment or vehicles can be affected. Emissions from diesel vehicles such as forklifts, lorries, buses, trains and tractors, particularly in enclosed spaces like garages or workshops can cause a problem. People working with fixed power sources such as compressors, 
generators or power plants, in sectors like tunnelling, mining or construction, could also be at risk. The main risk employment areas for exposure to diesel engine exhaust fumes include agriculture, construction, energy extraction, mining, rail, shipping, transport and logistics, tunnelling, vehicle repair and warehousing. So what should employers do to control exposure? Well, employers need to assess the risks of diesel exhaust fume exposure to their employees. You'll need to work out if they're exposed to fumes by answering the following questions. Are diesel engines or equipment being used in our workplace? Are diesel exhaust fumes being released into enclosed working areas like garages? Are diesel exhaust fumes being drawn into the workplace through ventilation inlets? Are diesel exhaust fumes concentrating in confined spaces or areas in buildings where there's limited air movement? Are there clear soot deposits on surfaces in the workplace? Is there a visible haze? Is there white, blue or black smoke, sometimes or always? Do people suffer from irritated eyes or lungs? If you find yourself answering yes to some or all of these basic questions, then there could be a risk of people being harmed by diesel exhaust fumes. If so, you'll need to arrange formal assessment of the hazard, which could include measuring elemental carbon concentrations. Depending on the results of the assessment, you may need to either prevent or control the potential exposures. So typical actions to control exposures could include switching to other forms of fuel where possible, for example gas or electric, replacing old engines with newer versions that have lower emissions, making sure that engines are maintained properly, especially fuel delivery systems, making sure diesel engine exhausts have filters, using local exhaust ventilation and good general ventilation in fixed or enclosed workplaces, using forced ventilation to draw fresh air into the workplace, using connecting extraction pipes for vehicle exhaust in workshops, filtering air in vehicle cabs, making sure that engines are turned off when they're not needed. If engines have to be left running, make sure the vehicle or equipment is moved outside checking that no one else is then exposed. Making sure cold engines are warmed up in spaces with good ventilation. Keeping building doors and windows open if it's practical. And rotating jobs between different employees to minimise exposure. After you've put in new control measures, you should assess the risk again to see if the actions you have taken have made a difference. For example, has the amount of soot or visible smoke been cut down or are people still suffering from irritated eyes and lungs? You may need to monitor levels of diesel exhaust fumes to find out whether the controls are working. This sort of monitoring should be done by someone who is competent in occupational hygiene monitoring techniques. If you don't have this sort of expertise, then you'll need to ask a properly qualified professional. Health surveillance should be carried out for employees who are exposed to carcinogens by a qualified occupational health professional. Remember that health surveillance of employees alone is the least effective strategy in terms of preventing new cases of cancer. You should also give people who could be at risk from exposure to diesel exhaust fumes information about the possible risks and how exposures can be cut down. Go to www.notimetolose.org.uk where you can download free posters, a leaflet, pocket cards for employees, toolbox talks and much more. So what can employees do to protect themselves? Well, ask your employer if you want more information or you're not sure they're taking the right action to protect you and your colleagues. If you've been asked to wear a protective kit, make sure it fits properly and ensure that you wear it every time you need to. Remember that this is there to look after your health. Make sure your workmates do the same. Remember, they may be risking your health, not just their own. And report any problems to your employer. For example, if you see faulty or missing equipment. There are things you can look out for. 
Watch out for signs that diesel fumes might be causing a problem. For example, walls or surfaces covered in soot. Is there a smoky looking haze when diesel engines are used? Is there blue or black smoke coming from diesel engines? These are all signs that could mean that diesel fume exposure is too high. If things need checking out, talk to your employer. If you've had a cough for more than three weeks or you have blood in your urine, then you should see your doctor. In most cases, this won't be serious. But if you have got a bigger health problem, then getting it diagnosed early can help make treatment more effective. We have and will continue to make materials across the whole life of this campaign, all for free. The Diesel Engine Exhaust Emissions Pack is already available to download from our campaign website now. Go to www.notimetolose.org.uk Thank you for listening. If you have any questions about occupational cancer or IOSH's No Time to Lose campaign, then please email campaigns at iosh.co.uk.